Let's take a look at this question. We are going to state the x values of inflection points for the original function f. And we are given three graphs. They all look the same. However, they represent different things. For the first one, you are given the original function f. And the second one is the first derivative. And the third one is the second derivative. We do have three different approach according to a situation to find out the inflection points for the original. Okay? And let me just kind of remind you real quick, the inflection points for the original function f is the place where the second derivative of the original function, okay, where the second derivative changes signs from positive to negative or from negative to positive. We can worry about that later because if you are looking for the first one, if you are given the original function f, to find out the inflection points, very easy. Because all you need to do is, the inflection point is where f changes from concave up to down, or the other way around, from concave down to up. You just look at the shape. If you are given the original function f, you look at the shape. As you can see, this part right here is concave down up to this point right here, right? So I will just like mark it right here. From here to here, it's concave down, and then from here to here, it's concave up. And then once again, after this point, it becomes concave down again. So we have two points here and here. In another word, x is equal to 3, x is equal to 5. This right here will be the points of inflection. So I'll just write down the answer for you guys. x is equal to 3 for this point, x is equal to 5 for this point. So this right here is the easy one when you are given the original function f. That's it. The second situation, if you are given the first derivative, remember, inflection point, it's the second derivative changes signs. But then, if you are given the first derivative only, what do we have to do? Remember, the second derivative can be interpreted as the slope of a tangent line of the first derivative. The second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. And we still care about where it changes signs. Because we are going to be looking for the slope, that means we have to look for the ups and downs. Okay? So, where is it changes from out, um, going up to going down? This point, right? Because the slope from here to up to 2 is positive, after 2, it drops down, it becomes negative. Okay, so positive slope, negative slope. So we change sign right here, the slope changes sign at 2. And as you can see from here, it's going down, so negative slope, and then going up, positive slope. So this right here will also be another place where the slope changes signs. And as you can see, this right here, going up, going down. Once again, for this, if you are given the first derivative, the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. And we have to find out where the slope changes signs. In another word, pretty much the min and max. Go up, okay, and then go down, and then go up again and go down. Anyways, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 6 for the second situation. And for the third situation, when you are given the second derivative already, well, we have to look, look at where it changes signs, right? In other words, the value of the second derivative changes signs. And remember, anything above the x-axis is positive, and anything below it is negative. And we are just looking for the x-intersection in this situation. Well, not, not quite, but like you have to make sure it changes signs. For example, it's originally negative here, and it got to positive, so we have a change right here. Yes, a change right here. Okay. Even though this is also an x intersection, but this right here, it doesn't change sign because it stays on top still, right? This point, where you change from positive to negative, is also a place where you change signs. So the value of f double prime change the signs, you just look at the y values directly from the graph. Anyways, x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 7. And this right here will be the answer. That's it.